the issue is alignment if my thinking is not in in alignment with God's way of thinking then it becomes very difficult for me to see what God is showing and say what God is saying well, let's go to Isaiah 43, please, once again, reading the first few, few verses, verses over there from verse 16. Thus said the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and the path in the mighty water. This is the kind of God we worship, who makes a way in the sea and a mighty path, okay? Which bringeth forth the chariot and horse and the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They're extinct. They're quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. So God is reminding, as I said before, He's reminding of what He has done. But He says, don't keep changing, please. But remember ye not the former things. Don't just focus and stay there. That's what God is saying. Not that you should forget what He has done. You never forget the good things that God has done. You always thank Him for that. But you don't park and camp around there remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old go on behold i will do a new thing now which shall spring forth shall ye not know it i will even make a way in the wilderness rivers in the desert okay now let me take you to the eight uh, verse 18 forget this is the niv i think forget the former things do not dwell on the past so he's saying all right i've done all this but don't dwell there Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Um, he says, see, I am doing a new thing. He's not saying, I'm going to do. I want you to listen very carefully. He's not saying, I'm going to do. He says, I am doing a new thing. God has already begun to do a new thing. In your life, in my life, in everything that you're involved in, in the life of this church as well. But, he says, see. And he says, I'm making a new way, a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. He says, see. The seeing that we're talking about is more than seeing with our natural eye. If you can't see it, you won't say it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When we talk about the abundance of the heart, what are we talking about? We are referring to the picture that is in your heart. So, I'm not talking about what you see with your natural eye. I'm talking about what do you see with your spiritual eyes in your heart? What is the image in your heart? Now you can be confessing, I was healed by his stripes, but deep inside you might have the picture. I don't think, you know, I've been trying this, I've done that, I've gone to the doctor, I've taken that medication, I'm even saying the word. But in the, in the heart of hearts, that's what we say, Deep inside, you have the picture of not getting better. But God is saying, I'm already doing a new thing. Can you see it? Your seeing plays a vitally important role. If you can't see it, you won't see it. If you can't see it and won't say it, you won't have it. Write that down. If you can't see it and won't say it, you won't have it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 please we having the same spirit of faith say spirit of faith the same spirit of faith according as it is written I believed therefore I have spoken say it with me I believed therefore have I spoken I believed therefore have I spoken so here, understand, sir, your speech is being controlled by what you believe. So he says, therefore has, have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. So my speech is being controlled by what I believe. All right, let me read this from the NIV. It says, it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also, have, we also believe and therefore speak. Let me remind you, my friend, what is believing? 
Anybody? Seeing. Seeing where? On the inside. What is the picture you hold? Now, we may be confessing that this is the year of new and significant wonders. Is that the picture you hold in your heart? You might not have yet experienced anything as yet, but if God has spoken, now it's my job to instill that in my heart and begin to see that picture. Because if you don't, there will be no change this year compared to last year. What is the picture you see? Do you see? That's why he said, see, I am doing a new thing. So, Listen, this is why prayer is so important. This is why prayer is so important. You can see with your natural eye, but can you see with your spiritual eyes? He woke up early in the morning. He looked around and he said, alas, master, we are undone. Because he saw the armies of the enemies all around. And the prophet said, we have more on our side than on the other side. He said, Lord, open his eyes. When his eyes were open, he saw the angels of God surrounding. But listen to what he said. He spoke what he saw. Are you with me? And he believed what he saw. So he said, alas, my master, we are undone. Why is prayer so important? Because the prophet had prayed. The prophet knew how to connect with God. And his spiritual inner eyes were open to behold the picture that God was showing. Can you see the picture that God is showing you for this year? That's the question. Or are you just casually saying, yes, this is my year of new and significant wonders? Or are you able to capture this on the inside? Say, and if you can, this is why we call for a fast and prayer. God, open my eyes. To behold the picture you have in store for my life, for my family, for my children, for my church, whatever that is, open my eyes. Because let me tell you, You will only say what you see. And when, he says what? I have believed, therefore have I spoken. When you believe and speak, power is released. With the heart, man believeth. And with the mouth, confession is made that Jesus is Lord and the person is saved. That is a principle. That's a law. That is not applicable only for salvation, but for everything in life. Say amen. amen. Look how God operates. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. He calleth those things which be not as though they were. He calleth those things which be not as though they were. What? Is God foolishly speaking things? Is God flippant in his speech? No. When he speaks, he's not hoping that it shall be so. When he speaks, it is because he has already seen it in eternity. He speaks what he sees. So when God says something... He's not going to go to work to accomplish it. It's already done. He sees the image. I'm going to explain it. You know it. Let me remind you again. God is not limited by time and space. He lives above the three-dimensional realm. In this realm, everything is in the now. He's calling us to come up into this realm and begin to see as he does. He sees and he speaks. Look at this. Genesis chapter 17 verse 4 please. Genesis 17 verse 4. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. He's talking about a covenant, alright? Verse 5. 
neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called what? Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Look, when God is speaking, what is say? He sees it. He's only saying what he is seeing. He says, I've made you a father of many nations. So when he has spoken that, what does that mean? He has seen it. When a prophetic word has been released over your life, what does that mean? God has already seen it accomplished. But are you willing to journey with him? Are you willing to believe and work with him? God is not saying something hoping. Many times we say things and we hope that they will happen. God doesn't operate like that. God sees it and he speaks it. So when a word has been released, whether it's for the church or for you personally, God has already seen it. That's why he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not my word. Why? Because he has already seen it established. And he operates in eternity. Say amen, somebody. So there is no hope involved here. It's a fact. It's a truth. All right? Let's carry on. Glory be to God. Amen. <clears throat> so he sees, therefore, that's what he says. And this is what he wants Abraham to see and say. So when a prophetic word is released, or a word is released, what does God expect? He expects us to see what he sees and say what he says. All right. Genesis 15 verse 3. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. What came unto him? Everybody, what came unto him? The word of the Lord. The word is seed. Don't forget that. The word of the Lord came to him. This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad. Okay. Look at the promise. He said, he, he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Now he's talking to a very old man, an old woman who is his wife. He brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. Uh, this is a very important step I need you to understand. Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And so, he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. God is helping Abraham to picture something. Because he knows the tempter will come to steal that word. To infuse doubt. So he says, I'm going to give you a picture of what I have already seen and spoken. God has seen it. Abraham has not seen it in the natural. So to help Abraham, he gives him what? A picture. So when you are praying for something, and when you're believing for something, it will always help if you have a picture of it on the wall. If you're sick and you're praying for healing, maybe your own picture when you were healthy and not with any kind of sickness, you were in divine health, good health, put that on the wall. And when you say, Lord, I thank you for I was healed by your stripes, I see myself healed like I was. Because you promise, what am I doing? I'm trying to engage my faculties to align with what God is saying. Here is, here, this is the issue. The issue is alignment. If my thinking is not in, al in alignment with God's way of thinking, then it becomes very difficult for me to see what God is showing and say what God is saying. Are you all with me this morning? So get a picture of that. Put it on the wall and begin to say, thank you, Lord. Put down the scriptures related to it. And keep saying it. Decree that healing. 
Job 28, 20, is it? Let's see. 28, 22, 28, please. Job 22, 28. Thou shalt also a decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Watch this. Thou shalt decree a thing. So many times we think, thou shalt decree a thing means you say it only once. No. Say it as long as it takes for it to happen. Keep decreeing it. Keep saying it. And keep seeing it. Hallelujah. See, I'm doing a new thing. He has already begun. There is something new that's happening in this ministry. There is something new that's happening in this church. And there will be significant wonders that will manifest because of that. Come on, you got, I got to believe it. You got to believe it. We got to realize God will do it. You know, this whole aspect of confessing the word, if you only say it without seeing it, it will not produce. That's why confession should not be monotonous. Confession should not be like rote. Confession should not be mechanical. Confession should always be mingled with your imagination. You see the picture as you say it.